Hello all. Welcome. It is me, E. I am not it's my phone is being weird. It still says upcoming, but oh nope, there it goes. Never mind. Okay. Alright. Hello, it is me, Ye, your favorite Jackson. You're and ye? uh gonna... Wait, wait, you're Ye? No, I'm not Ye. No, that's not me. Huh. That's a relief. No. Someone else is Ye. Not me, fortunately. Okay. Uh, and joining me is Peter, my wonderful host and co-host. Yes. <laughs> Unless you're Yi, because if that were, would have been the case, I would have been out. Yeah, I'm not no. producing for you. No, Yee. I don't make music or uh, you're not Jesus either. With the um, the 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 National Socialist Party, um, and you're not Jesus. <laughs> Or better it's than, true. better than Jesus. Jesus. Well, because... I can't do any cool party tricks like turning water into wine. There's a really funny TikTok. I've seen it multiple times. Um, that's like, uh, what is it? Uh, Jesus uh, turns water into, um, oh, what was was it? Uh, Pino, I think. And they're all uh, his apostles are like, oh man, he did Pino again. Could you do something else? <laughs> you know, like, uh, you know. Chauvignon Blanc or or, you know, or something in you know, a Sauvignon Gin or and, uh, Bourbon or <laughs> it was it was pretty funny. Something um, and then also joining us is Nestling, one of my editors. Hello, good to be back. We have been very busy behind the scenes working on scripts. Um, we did the Lampreys Tale recently, which which ended up being like a mini documentary. <laughs> 45 minutes. <laughs> um is it the lo is it the longest video that you have ever done? I think it may be. I think that video. may be yeah, the, the longest yeah, think, scripted, yeah. Yeah, no, at, le at least of course uh live streams will be longer of course, but right, I think the longest scripted, scripted video. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it is the longest one. Um Yeah, that 45 minutes is pretty long for us. I mean, Erica over at Guts at Gibbon has done some like three hour scripted videos. And then of course, you know, there is a what H Bomber guy's like four hour video on plagiarism. Um, you know, so there there are some pretty pretty long videos out there uh, on YouTube. Um one of the things about Kent Hoven was like he managed to get his what his like hour long Kent Hoven speech on YouTube back in the early days when not a lot of people made videos that were longer than like 10 minutes. That was one of the things that made him really popular early on, on YouTube. Um, but yeah, I think that's the longest scripted video we've ever done. Uh, and I think it turned out really well. I was really happy with the way it turned out. We covered a lot of really cool stuff. We talked about the evolution of teeth and scales and jaws and spiracles, all sorts of neat stuff. Ostracoderms, placoderms, chondrichthians, Agnathans, you know, or cyclostomes, whatever. Um, the next one is the Lancelot's Tale, and I've already finished the script for that and sent it off to Nestlig. Um, oh, I, I did not, I did not notice it, it yet. Sorry, I will, I will take a look at it. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. I know you're busy. Um, uh, so yeah, they, you know, I finished the, the Lancelot's Tale, and I've already started writing the Ragworm's Tale, which is the next one. Um. So yeah, we're we're hard at work over here at Jackson Weed Incorporated, uh, working on a new script. New oh, well, what what was your uh, like um, motto at the beginning? Like, uh, hello, it's your favorite. Ye? <laughs> it's your favorite. It's your favorite uh, Jackson. It's me, ye, or something like that. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I I just say things sometimes. I I was thinking about like, oh, it's your favorite uh, grain of the old chaff. <laughs> like wheat, like wheat. Your favorite yeah. grain of the old chaff. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, when we get into so the Lancelot's tale, is isn't chaff like, the the Russian version of a redneck? Just is no. it? Yes. No, it it's, is. it's it's just like it's it's like like when you separate the grain from the chaff when you harvest. Yes, but it's like that, that's uh, <laughs> never mind, never mind. But a, but a chaff in Russian is not a good thing if you're a chaff. No, no, no. <laughs> Just is saying. that um, 
Uh, so are, are there rednecks like living out in Siberia? Well, Is that where they put it's, their rednecks? It's the Russian form, you know, undereducated, uh, overconfident, annoying. Uh, I mean, all, <laughs> all the, the good parts. That, that, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so let's see. So the Lancelot's Tale, we talk about, you know, the features that make chordates chordates. Um, and that one also ended up being pretty long on, on my end. I'm sure you'll you'll add to it. Uh, so that one might turn out pretty long, too. Uh, I think the Ragworm's Tale is also going to be pretty long. Because um, we have to go from Ambulacraria, so, which is the, the only other clade of extant deuterostomes besides chordates. And by the way, may I say, Ambulacraria is a terrible name for that clade. <laughs> and it's a terrible name because what does Ambulacraria refer to? It refers to ambulacral grooves. Now you might think, well, okay, if, it's, if the name of these two groups, the hemichordates and the echinoderms, are referring to ambulacral grooves, well, surely both groups have those, right? No. Hemichordates don't have ambulacral grooves. It is not a plesiomorphic character of ambulacraria. Um, just hemichordates don't have it at all. It's not like they had. A, it's not like it's a character they had and they lost it. Uh, they just didn't have it. In fact, ambulacral grooves aren't even in all stem echinoderms. They are a derived character with any echinodermata. So I just think it's a terrible name. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's my that is my opinion. That's my hot take on ambulacrarians. <laughs> Ambulacrarian and, 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 taxonomy. And, that, and does does the book also like mention the uh, fertilocodians? Uh no, Dawkins doesn't, but we will. Uh oh, yeah. we'll cover them <laughs> in the Ragworm's Tale because I'm reading a paper that was published last year that has them as it pens them as tentative stem deuterostomes. Both the Ananozoan and the Tulicolian as tentative stem deuterostomes, which kind of makes sense to me, uh, except for like Banfia. Banfia is a weird one um, because the Tulicolians have this weird bipartite body pine. They look kind of like tadpoles, uh, but they have this cuticular uh, covering on them, uh, which might ally them with Ectisozoans, except for the fact that they have pharyngeal arches, like uh, which is a characteristic ancestral for deuterostomes and so they have these kind of odd mix of characters which could be reminiscent of the ancestral nephrozoan for instance um it could mm -hmm. be the case that maybe the ancestor of protostomes and deuterostomes looks something like these weird little tadpole guys with gills i mean i wouldn't be particularly surprised because if think about it if you think about, and the same goes for Unanozoan, it's like a weird little, it looks kind of like Hykuichthys, but like without the characters that uh, are diagnostic of chordates, basically, except for the gills, the pharyngeal arches. So it's, a again, tentatively a stem deuterostome. And again, that's what we expect. So in this series, we've said over and over and over and over again that as you get to the point where two clades meet, their fossil relatives are going to look, um, they're going to, like, on both sides, they're going to start converging, right? Yeah. They're not going to have all the characteristics that are diagnostic of the crown group, that is, the, the extant members of that group. They're going to have some of them, probably, but not all of them. So uh, some of those characteristics, and they'll have some characteristics that are ancestral for the whole group, and they're going to look like um, uh, um, relatives on the opposite side of that branch, uh, because, of course, I mean, they're getting close to their ancestor, so they're going to look more like the ancestor. And so it gets really difficult to figure out, well, which side of the line do they fall on? Is this a stem deuterostome or is this a stem protostome? And at this point, you know, we're not looking at stuff like, uh, like uh, you know, stem manatees versus stem elephants, even though those are mm -hmm. pretty similar at their base because they share a, a, you know, a common ancestor in the Cenozoic. We're looking at things that diverged 600 million years ago, you know, 
So they diverged from things for which we really don't have a very good fossil record because most of them were small and soft bodied. And the characteristics that define them as a group are pretty limited, right? For deuterostomes, it's like maybe a dorsal nerve cord and pharyngeal arches. And that's it. Those are like the only characteristics that will define like a stem deuterostome. There's really nothing else. And so if you find that some kind of weird, you know, bag-like or tadpole-like critter in the fossil record 550 or so million years ago, like, how are you going to figure out where it goes? It's really hard. <laughs> so that's why in the Ediacaran, the period right before uh, the Cambrian, all of the fossils that we have are from what are called Lagerstaten. So they're these really well-preserved mm -hmm. uh, uh, fossil sequences. Basically, you have this this like um really good set of of pristinely preserved fossils, and that's and because all these organisms are soft-bodied, they have to be preserved this way. If you don't have that, they're not going to get preserved, and so. Um, and then at that point in the Ediacaran, you have like your stem bilaterians and your stem metazoans and trying to figure out who's in which group is also difficult. Uh, there's been a lot of debate over that in the last like decade yeah, or so. Yeah, it's also like K Kimberella is also like, uh, it may be a mollusk or it may be a stem mollusk or maybe even a stem blophozoan. Or... Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, exactly. It's, it's, yeah. It's although we're, I, I would so... I would be comfortable in as a like it appears to have a, a, a radula like uh, uh like these, these marks that's mm -hmm. like points to a radula so I I think it's maybe a stem mollusk or or a mollusk yeah yeah I wouldn't be surprised if it's yeah like a, a stem mollusk or something like that or stem lophotrochozoan yeah. yeah um and the the cool thing about this is like we're only within the last like 10 years or so have researchers started figuring out where these things go because you had guys like, uh, was it Glasner or Glasner, however you pronounce his name back in the 1960s, who was digging out in Ediacara Hills in Australia and finding Dickinsonia and Spragina and all these other guys, but, and, and, you know, Charnia, whatever else, but he had no idea what they were. And then we found them in Avalon Hill uh, up in uh, what Canada, I think. Um, and then you have, uh, what is it, the White Sea Assemblage, which I believe largely comes from Russia, if I remember. Um, but anyway, basically you have these Ediacaran assemblages and, and we have a bunch of really weird, uh, like, you know, critters with a glide symmetry instead of bilateral symmetry, stuff that is like fractal. Um, you have these weird, like the, like Tribrachidium, which are like these spirally, uh, like spirally symmetric, uh, animals, very weird stuff. And only within the last 10 years or so have researchers been able to identify, Hey, Dickinsonia and it's phylum proarticulata. These guys are stem bilaterians, the, the glide symmetry ones. And then like, uh, like Charnia. Uh, and the Arboreomorphs and the Ernetiomorphs, all these weird frond-like animals, these are stem eumetazoans. And so, like, only mm -hmm. recently, last few years, like, within the last 10 years, have we finally, like, figured out where these things go. Which makes sense, right? The earliest fossils we find of animals are sponge steranes from the cryogenian, and then a little bit later, we find the earliest stem eumetazoans and then we find a little bit later stem bilaterians and then a little bit later we have this big radiation of crown bilaterians like that makes and, uh, perfect sense <laughs> i think we also have like a a, a cnidarian like a hausha i think it's pronounced mm -hmm. or how yeah well yeah i mean there are there are stem and crown cnidarians in the ediacara yeah. how to you um aurora lumina or whatever however it is but yeah but like but th that's what i mean right like we have sponges first then we have stem eumetazoans and crown eumetazoans, as well as stem bilaterians. And then we have the crown bilaterians after that, which is, mm -hmm. you know, Nestle, that seems kind of evolutionary to me. I don't know about you. That that does seem a little evolutionary. Nah. Nah. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> but like when you read, for instance, the, uh, the literature, for, and I use that ver term very loosely, literature from like, you know, Gunter Beckley, uh, and Stephen Meyer over at the Discovery Institute. Do you get any 
sense of that at all. No, <laughs> they're not going to tell you about that. They're not going to tell you about the the really cool um, you know steps that paleontologists have taken in identifying these organisms and placing them on the tree of life uh, and uncovering them from you know the rocks because that kind of defeats the narrative. If suddenly I, it's all very evolutionary and not, you know, God spake it into existence, then that's kind of problematic. What you it's, 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 it's something that we have discussed before. Like, uh, they, they basically have two boxes when it comes to the, this issue. Like, oh, either it goes into the uh, not transitional enough box or it's, mm -hmm. it's too transitional enough, uh, or too transitional box. Like, right. Like, you have, like you have Stephen Meyer saying like oh like anomalocaris or these like uh, mm -hmm. uh, stem st stem arthropods are like oh they are just arthropods like uh, nothing special or so yes. nothing nothing different and then when you go back even further like Kimberella like oh or, or maybe the rangeomorphs and such and oh it's 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 uh, it, it's irrelevant to the issue it's too tra too transitional basically you know, it's yeah yes yeah exactly it's um well and then you have yeah so. Um, or I loved a thing he did in um, uh, Darwin's Doubt. So mm -hmm. he took the lobopods, which are a paraphyletic assemblage of stem uh, stem onychophorans, or sorry, stem panarthropods, stem onychophorans, stem tardigrades, and stem arthropods, and lumped them all as one phylum called lobopodia. All right. <laughs> because again, why I just like it's not transitional enough, I guess. Even though this is a group of liter of different like fossils from the stem like uh stem groups of multiple phyla. No, it's fine. No, we're not going to talk about it. They're not they're not uh you know, they're not uh, okay. transitional. Uh, okay. here, here they go into the waste best basket taxon and we don't need to deal about them because of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's insane. Um, it's it's really bad, <laughs> really bad. So, anyway, um, we are gonna look again today at the uh, at the the fraud video. Um, and I do want to say I want to make a note from last time. So there was a fossil that was mentioned at the very end of the video, in which the guy quoted a well-known paleoanthropologist as um <clears throat> as a uh, saying that this fossil was a fraud even though it isn't it's it's not a fraud like it's just a fossil of either of like some early homo um but he quotes the guy saying that this thing is a fraud of course the only place you can find that quote is with carl werner the paleoanthropologist doesn't say it anywhere else. So of course, you know, that's the only place you can find it. Not surprising. So, well, so speaking about frauds, um, I still watch okay. uh, you, while, while you watch Hoven, the lesser more on Twitter, I, I still watch Hoven, the, the, the honorable, I think I don't know. <laughs> the, honorable. the, 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 <laughs> the larger, the, 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 the more worrying, so, the greater? Yeah, no, I I wouldn't call him greater. I would that no. <laughs> but um so he he did uh uh his whack an atheist uh thing again yesterday. Mm -hmm. Uh as he should. And and he was talking about a guy called uh Donald Prosso. Donald Prothero, yeah, we've no, had no, him on no, the channel. No, 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 Prosso. Prosso. He showed pictures of Prothero. Prothero. He also showed that the text oh, okay. said Prothero, but he couldn't. He couldn't. <laughs> He's kind of calling him Prothero. Yeah, he he just said okay. Prothero. Uh, but so Hovind <laughs> is now right. desperately in need of someone because he can't find it. He wants the um, the court transcripts uh, of the trial against Heko. For his his famous uh, the thing that didn't exist yes the the trial that didn't because exist he made it up. the trial that didn't exist he wants the transcript and he's looked everywhere but he can't find them because he made it up yes it's he yeah was literally the person who made it up like if you try I think I 
Or actually, I could be wrong. I think I have seen one source that predates him that claims that there was a trial at Jenna. Yeah. Uh, if I remember correctly. But it also had no references in it at all. No. And that was it. I, That's I the forgot, only thing I can find. Everything. I forgot who it was that there was someone who actually contacted the University of Jenna and they said, yeah, that that never happened. That we, There's no record of any of that. So, uh, no, yeah, that, that didn't happen. It, it's like, I guess... I guess it's not fair to say he made it up, but he probably he copied it. I'm sure from someone else who. I think it's fair to say that he didn't make it up because that would take some kind of intelligence, and and I don't think he's had it. I don't. I don't know. But so another fun fact: um, he recently did a debate, Mister Mister Hovind, the uh, the more obnoxious. The with, not so greater? Yes, with someone even more obnoxious, um, Stephen Stephen Anderson, on oh, a, on a okay. channel even more obnoxious, so obnoxious in fact that YouTube took it down. Um, so that was the end of the debate. At least that's what we thought. But um, a good friend of mine, Mark Stoney, former DAL member, uh, rescued mm. that debate and put it up on his channel. So a debate between okay. Hovind and Anderson, and Hovind desperately wants to be liked by Stephen Anderson, and Stephen Anderson desperately wants to trash Hovind during the entire debate. So yeah, that was that was a fun one for me to watch. I mean, he literally disagrees with everything that comes out of Hovind's mouth, everything. And, and yeah, I thought it was funny. I mean. Not at all surprising. Yes. Uh, Hovind really does, you know, yeah, I, he definitely does want to be uh, liked and, and revered and everything. Mm -hmm. The problem is he's, you know, not good at anything. So Yeah, if his that. fellow Christians criticize him, that's that's a blow. Oh, oh. Uh, savage premarital pre mitosis. Coke. <laughs> <laughs> for two dollars says it's less well documented than hoven's diploma very true yes yes <laughs> Pre I'm, I'm, give, I'm giving that one a like and so should everyone else oh good oh we have a creationist in the chat oh do we you know if you want to defend if you want to defend creationism we are happy to have you on um uh, I actually, I was talking to, there were two separate creationists today who, one of them was the so-called expert debater. And I said, oh, you're an expert debater. Why, why don't you come on? We, I have a channel. We can talk to you. And he mm. went, no, I'm not coming on yeah. your channel. What, did he, what was his reason? I don't even remember what his stupid reason was. Um, I forgot. He, I for he declined. Uh, new, new, neutral platform or something. Like, I, I wanted a neutral platform. Uh, well, uh, no, that wasn't there, even there, it, we I can think. Get, we, no, that that wasn't it. Yeah, that was some somebody else mentioned mm. that. But like, we could get a neutral platform if that were his worry. Like, I'm I don't care. Um, so he cowered out of a debate with me, and then there was another guy who, uh, also cowered out of a debate with me. It's just it's so much fun. They're they're all scared. Um, so anyway, um, and then and then you got I, mus muscular you muscular Jesus responded to that. That to yeah. me that was the most fun one. Uh, he he said debates are the weapon of men of absolutely no physical power because That's yeah right. he probably just like beats people with a stick if yeah. you don't have a brain uh, also, a club is the next best thing right that's i mean <laughs> yeah yeah also i i i am not familiar about pelt down man i i am familiar about filth down man but not pelt down man he was the more hairy version like, 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 he he had yeah. he'd had a little bit more hair. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually I was looking to see oh I ratioed him. That's so funny. Okay. Mm -hmm. What a bunch of morons. Anyway. I do enjoy ratioing these cowards. It's very fun. Um anyway. All right. Moving on. Okay, so today we're going to get back to uh, looking at this video where all the frauds are in the museums. So uh, are we ready? Yeah, it, it seems to be uh, 
making breaking news, breaking news. And they got that down pretty well, but I would advise to get a better uh, microphone for the uh, the news anchor, because that was kind of a giveaway that it wasn't really, really news. Well, you'll, you'll hear it. <laughs> let's, let's start the video. Right. Okay. 150 frauds at all the largest museums, Paris, London, New York City, Buenos Aires, Johannesburg, involving the most common ape men you would think of, Neanderthal man, Homo habilis, Australopithecus afarensis, Australopithecus africanus, Did we start this last time? Et cetera, et cetera. It is uh, widespread and this is an alarming, oh, let alarming me check. Uh, discovery. I think we started Welcome this one last time. Welcome to the time. Creation Today show, where we bring together interviews with experts and solid Bible teaching. Your host, Eric Hovind, affirms the oh ultimate dear. authority of God's oh dear. word, the truth of creation, and yes. why it matters. Yes, okay, so we did start it. Uh, my bad. We should be at... That's okay. Oh, okay. So, let me do I that. I think we were like about to like... Uh, so it's seven minutes in or something. I, five I, I minutes. I don't remember exactly when we stopped. I five, five, five minutes. minutes. Yeah. I, okay. I overestimated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nestle, I appreciate your confidence in us. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think I think this should be about it. And I do, I do want to point out before we start. Also, again, sorry. Uh, I'm I'm cutting them off before they even open their mouths. Um, the remember. Neanderthal man is just a human to them, right? Like Neanderthals are just people. So when he says Neand like fraud Neanderthal men, like what what does he mean? They're just people. Um, I don't know. I, I have heard, I have heard uh, a man with wickets or something like yeah. Maybe I don't know. That's yeah. because that was really only like the first one early on, right? But or that was like what it was claimed early on or whatever. But Neanderthal, like today, all the creationist organizations like acknowledge um, that it's just, that they're just humans. They they claim. Like, are they like, are they like saying they are, they are pre flood humans or? No, I think know. they say that the I that like seen. Adam and Eve was like pre the common ancestor of Denisovans, Neanderthals, and humans, and so Denisovans and Neanderthals are just like degenerate people basically yeah jackson you you have to you have to amend the title because this was what threw me off as well trusty ape said it i thought this was part oh. one so it apparently is part well, two. technically okay we're, we were only five minutes in and we covered we spent <laughs> very little time on this in the last episode yeah so so this is like by the title, what I meant was, we are like fully going into this one because the last one we just kind of tacked it on at the very end because we knew we were close to the end of the other video. Jackson, as your producer, that's not how how numbering work. Well, I am the, <laughs> the law. The first so... the first time you address the video is the first time, and the second time is not the first <sighs> time. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, keep going. okay. The journal of, um, you know, French journal, and it's written in French. And so you had to translate it. And I thought, I'm not going to let anyone do this work. Oh, yeah, I remember this. The work of translating. And and then I'm going to put a whole paragraph of what was said. Translating is so hard in, in today's world so with Google doesn't look Translate. Like I'm quote mining. I want to make it totally reliable information. And you can follow the quotes all the way down to this bibliography. And you can follow the photographs all the way down, and it is astounding. Ah, uh, okay, Dr. Warner. Um, hey, I tell you what, before you give me the first fraud, or before we jump into this as well, uh, or however you go through this, can you real quick tell me what made you do this? I mean, like this, it's almost like it's it's crazy what you've spent 27 years doing. Why did you do this? It is Why crazy. is he still close to the like, camera? Okay, so this starts as a 19-year-old medical student 1979 i think that was i was at the university of missouri on a full tuition that's science really. scholarship that's an unusual thing to have a science scholarship okay and 
I was a straight A biology undergrad. I was also in medical school at age 19. And some okay. crazy Christian took me out to dinner and asked me three questions about evolution. And his questions were so simple. And yet I could not answer one of them. And, and I realized right. that there's something wrong what with were they? belief oh, system. Oh, so you why, did pay attention in class. Him? His questions were, say, where did matter come from if it all came from, you know, natural? Well, really? Are you kidding me? <laughs> and there is no answer to that because of the laws of thermodynamics. The second question is, oh, my God. Because, Carl, you know that the large molecules, the macromolecules, like the DNA, <sighs> the double helix. It's, it's origins the of bus. enzymes. It Even over is. 50 years Naturally. ago, how could Every life time. ever begin? And Every the third question time. is, why does the fossil record not match evolution? Which I knew it, it did. does. But he said, but how can that be with one billion? Okay. It I'm, does. The I'm, fossil record does match evolution. What do you mean? I, 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 I am, I am, I'm a little bit triggered. So let's see if we can do this. Just a small amount. And his third question is, why does a fossil record... What's a fossil? Okay. Anyone know what a fossil is? <laughs> I didn't even oh, catch oh, that, a fossil. <laughs> yes, that... Why does the fossil record... Good that's that's yeah. a good catch, Peter. What's, uh, what's a fossil record? Oh, Camilla caught it too. Camilla says she also caught it, yeah. Yeah. Very true. It, may, it, may be a, it may be a fossil of a fossa. A, a, fos, a fossa fossil. Yeah. A fossa fossil. fossil. <laughs> okay, so like, so obviously as a medical student, you are probably not going to be taught like the origin of the universe unless I guess you take a cosmology class for whatever reason. And even then, maybe not. Um, how would... did life begin? Again, like there are literally zero classes I took. Okay, part of one class in my entire undergrad where we like briefly discussed the origin of life part of one class and then three is a loaded question why does the fossil record not match evolution that that's just a loaded question it does the because it does does match what we expect under evolution well the fossil record doesn't to know the fossil, oh, the fossil, the fossil record probably does yeah the fossil, yeah, the fossil, fossil record, record does though. yeah the fossil record does yeah <laughs> the, 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 the fossil record is probably uh, restricted to Madagascar. <laughs> um, but but um, but yeah. So like again, him being a medical student, I wouldn't expect a medical student to know much about paleontology. Like that's not their field. Their field is is anatomy, right? That and medicine, that's what his uh schooling was for. Um, and so, like, he has his area of expertise. None of these questions are about his, his area of expertise. And if he were smart, which he isn't, uh, then he would have said, you know, I don't know what the answers to these are. Um, this isn't a thing I study, but it wasn't. He went. Oh, oh, the dumb evolutionists don't have answers to anything and became a creationist. So, I mean, and that's even assuming like he's telling the truth with this story. I mean, obviously we can't check, but that's assuming he's telling the truth. Um, as Dapper points out, there are zero people we're aware of who were non-religious first and then went straight to creationism from the science. They did not have a a like pre-religious background, or didn't like go through Christianity first. Uh, I I have heard about Fred Royal, or maybe I'm mistaken about that. So he wasn't a creationist. He was a or he wasn't a young Earth creationist, I should say. Fred Hoyle acknowledged that the universe was old, but he had no, some I... really wacky beliefs yeah. about like Archaeopteryx. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't. He was um. He was, he was also like a fat spermia the... guy as well, yeah. Well, right, yeah, because he accepted evolution because he was like, yeah, abiogenesis happens all the time everywhere in space. It just rains down on Earth. Um, so he accepted evolution, 
just a really weird version of it. And he was anti um, Archaeopteryx. And uh, I think he was like pro the steady state model, which is why he like hated the Big Bang Theory. Um, I didn't, didn't, didn't he also was the one who coined the term Big Bang as a derogatory term, but it I got adopted basically. The Big Bang got adopted. Yeah. That term. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, Hoyle was a weird guy, and uh, Wickrama Singh, his student, and their group are also really weird. They were the ones who came up with that stupid meme about uh, octopus genes from outer space. Oh, yeah, I remember uh, that, yeah. Or like, and viruses fall to Earth from outer space and that crap. Um, all, all silly nonsense. Um, but, but at any rate, anyway, we're, we're getting off topic. We can keep going not match evolution, which I knew it didn't, but he said, but how can that be with 1 billion fossils? So he was a creationist already. Billion fossils collected in the museum. Why wouldn't you be able to see evolution for every animal group? And that started me on my first 18 years of just kind of reading Eric and just trying to for, sort it out. It's like, well, this must be this and this must yeah, be pause, this. Pause for a moment. Finally, pause for a moment. I told like he, like he says, like, oh, if you have billions of fossils, why don't we yeah, see, why cannot we see uh, the evolution of every animal group? Because most fossils are only spe only from a specific groups that fossilize really, really well. Like it's not it's not equally distributed. That's the that's the one thing. But, but it, aside from that, we still have a lot of fossils from many many animal groups, and they show us evolution. Still, mm -hmm. yeah. And we've uh, we've done like an entire series on them or something like that on our channel. We, are, we, we may even be still doing the series yeah. as we speak. It's, yeah. it's almost like we've been doing the series for like three years now and we're still doing it. Every, maybe, okay, well, maybe not every, I don't know. Pretty close. Almost every episode of the series has transitional fossils of some sort in it. Almost every episode. Even the freaking... Um, like the flounder's tail had transitional yeah. fossils in it. It had uh, amphistium and heteronectes, which are uh, which are, are flat fish that have eyes that are that have not quite crossed the midline yet, but they're way at the top of the head on the what was it the left side or whatever. Mm -hmm. At any rate, so they're way at the top of the head on one side, but they haven't yet crossed to the other side, which is the case for modern flatfish. Um, so like yeah, for for almost. Okay, the pike's tail. I guess we didn't talk about transitional fossils in the pike's tail, but that was because it was all extant fish morphology. So we didn't talk about them in that one. But like other than that, almost all of them. We've even done a couple of episodes that are ex that are just about they're exclusively about fossil groups like uh the handyman's tail. That was exclusively or um oh, I'm sorry. Uh sorry, I wasn't looking at the uh the chat. Uh, savage premarital mitosis cobra for two dollars taphonomy what even is that oh taphonomy is the study of how organisms fossilize so what taphonomists do and uh, mm -hmm. they're not even taphonomist isn't really a thing it's like you're just a geologist or a paleontologist you're basically a person who looks at the chemical uh composition of like the sediment that these organisms are in what what environment did they die in how do they get uh how did the sediment cover them and then get lithified and how did that affect their body that which is a uh, diagenesis the process by which the sedimentation and compaction process affects the organism basically all these processes kind of work together to affect um how organisms are preserved so taphonomy we use taphonomy to understand for instance why are there so few jellyfish fossils well there are so few jellyfish fossils because jellyfish are all soft-bodied you have to have exceptional preservation conditions for these critters to get buried and then make a fossil which is like an imprint it's basically like a like a negative of their their body um because the rest <laughs> the of it's, the, stu the, stu the study of taffy <laughs> the study of it's taffy easy. correct it's yes <laughs> i and i believe i believe like it's still a good a good uh question a good answer but i i believe savage may be a bit like uh so sarcastic, like, oh, what is that for me even? Like, because because oh. Werner is Werner is not aware of what that for me in the intel. Oh, I, I see yeah. what you're saying. Okay, yeah. my bad. Yeah, my yeah. bad. I can't. <laughs> no, no, no worries. I yeah. can't. Uh, I can't intuit. Um, 
uh, uh, sarcasm through the internet. My bad. Okay, we can keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Peter, are, Peter. Are you there? My wife, I want to go do a one-year oh, project you. and go <laughs> do interviews. And that was the start of 1997. I thought it was going to take me a year, but I'm hey, there very was one slow. Jackson, though. <laughs> it took me, I mean, I'm extremely slow. And, and I'm kind of like Jacob, you know, where I worked seven years for Rachel, and I got stuck with Leah. And then I had to go another seven years, and then I got Leah, but then her father wouldn't let me take Rachel off. And so I had to do another seven years. So I, I am very tenacious. I just won't let go of something once I realize I, I have something really important. So now 27 years. Uh, so it sounds like you're at the end of the fourth one of whatever those seven years are. You're getting towards the end of that fourth one. You got to share with us what you and Debbie have discovered and, and why this is so significant. I, I heard you talk uh, on a you're doing a couple of little Zoom things, kind of private things for some people. And I got invited to one of those. And honestly, I was hearing things that in all my years, 25 years of speaking on apologetics and creation versus evolution, you were sharing things with me that I had never heard before. And I just sat there going, wow, I, I this truth needs to be uh, exposed. Uh, the frauds need to be exposed and this truth needs to be proclaimed. So, okay. Just, just to make a note, if you hear something that you haven't heard before, it therefore is true. And it has to be known by everyone <laughs> because it is new and you haven't heard it before, so it must be true. Is this... Well, if he hasn't heard of it, then it must be true, which is probably a lot of things. I mean, let's be yeah, honest. So, well, okay, okay, I'll, I'll give you that. Most of what he hasn't heard is true. Again. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's basically what apologetics is, right? You yeah. only talk about things that basically. aren't true, so you won't hear about <laughs> things that are true. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it's, okay. yeah, that's true. I, I agree. Mm -hmm. Can you start taking us through some of the frauds that you've discovered? And I don't know how, if you have a method or how you go through them, I, but I'd, I'd, I'd love us to learn. This. I'd love to hear you the know method. What? Since we just have this this limited time. I'm going to <laughs> just show you some highlights. I don't have time order, to actually explain everything. I Sorry, I got to go by. There's 150 frauds. Actually, some people would guess more than 150, but there's okay. 150 frauds. And here's the first one. This okay. chart that we all grew oh, up on. Oh, for God's sakes. Uh, this chart of Are we doing this a crap small again? ape evolving to a human. And the chart is called the road to homo sapiens. And we interviewed the scientist. He's passed away now. His name was F. Clark Howell, who wrote this book for Time Life. Uh -huh. And through the course of the interview and reading his books and interviewing his colleagues, all that's important too. You have to do the interview, the side interviews. We realized that 10 of, there's only 14 animals in here, that 10 of the 14 animals that he put on here that we've all believed were not ape men. He knew, let me repeat that. He knew 10 of the animals we're what? not a wait, 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 wait. Now, pause. I just want to pause, pause, pause. Hold on. I I think he circled Dryopithecus on there, which Dryopithecus is not a hominin. Dryopithecus is a stem uh, hominoid, if I remember correctly. So like technically, I, yeah, I, th I, th I think it's like uh, like a uh, gorillas, chimpanzees, and humans are closer to each other than Dryopithecus were alive, right? I think. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So basically, like, if I remember correctly, yeah. Okay. Maybe you're right. Maybe it's like it's a stem African ape. If uh, I think yes, you're right. Yes. I think um, so. I think so. Yeah. So yeah. So so technically, so if you're gonna say it's not a an ape man in the sense that it's not a hominin, which is how I assume he's using that term, then yes, Dryopithecus is not a hominin. It's a stem uh, African ape, but it's. It's still a transitional fossil between the earlier, like, uh, uh, like pongines and the earlier hominoids and the later, uh, you know, African apes. So it fills the time period and has the morphology between what we expect, right? Between these groups, which is why yeah. it's where it is. So if you're going to say, well, it's not an ape man, 
Well, no one's saying it is. It. I mean, it's an ape, but it's not a human. I I might be mistaken, so but if, that if, that picture, that particular picture that he just put up, isn't that supposed to to uh, interpret the like evolution progress. of humans from other great apes, which would imply that probably not all of the. I think it goes the, back even farther than that. Yeah, that not all of the, the the species in that particular picture are human. Let me see human. if I can... I guess, I, guess it all, I guess the old march of progress... Mm -hmm. uh, Let me see if I can thing. find a picture mm -hmm. that tells us every all the ape species in it, because I want to know. I think... I, I, I believe that I believe on the most far oh, left I found is it. A, a, a gibbon, right? On the most far left. Okay, so I found it. Okay, so it's Pliopithecus, Proconsul, Dryopithecus, Oreopithecus, Ramopithecus, Australopithecus, Paranthropus, Advanced Australopithecus, Homo erectus, Early Homo sapiens, uh, Two Erectus, uh, Neanderthals, Cro-Magnon, and Modern Man. Okay, so given that, given those, um, obviously... Most of the the first one, two, three, four, five, the first five are not hominins, but they are hominoids. Except I don't. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is Pliopithecus a hominoid? I can't. I, can't I, 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 I like Pliopithecus is like a no. Stem, that's Gepherine. Gaff, yeah. Stem uh, it seems to be. Hold on. I'm trying to find out. Hold on. Let me run back. Uh, blah 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 blah. Uh, you send me a day. Blah 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 blah. Um, I think you're right. I think it's a stem catarine. Okay, or is it Caterini? Hold on, let's see. Can I get a da 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 da? Yes, it is a stem catarine. Okay, so you're right, Nestle. So Pliopithecus is a stem catarine. Um, Proconsul is a stem hominoid. Dryopithecus is a stem. Is it stem? No, no, no. Sorry, it's a stem like African ape that we just mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Oreopithecus is in the same group. Jackson. Yes. Alex. Yes. Alex Markel just put in the chat. Jackson, you're doing more thinking than this guy has done for the past 30 years. I think he might that's be right. True. <laughs> he might be right. Uh, Ramapithecus, that's a pungine, so that's in the um, orangutan group. Yeah. And then all the rest are, are within our hominins. Okay. And many of these are still like like transitional stem stem groups, but they are not they're not specifically to the human line. They are Correct. also more more basal as well but my, uh, my main problem with the, these images is that they don't show like they, they are they are put in a, in, a, in a line but they should have been put in a of course a yeah right yeah. of course of course now yeah. will he make that argument probably not and which is no. so funny because like that's an actual no. yeah. that's an actual mm -hmm. valid criticism of uh zalinger's Mar march of progress right yeah is that it yes. depicts evolution as anagenetic, which it isn't. It's cladogenetic. I guess um, it's also the same the same with the classical depiction of like horses with within one single column like that. Like no, it's it's a it's a bit more bushier than that than that. Like yeah. Same principle. V vowels are a lie. I like that. Um <sighs> yeah. Yeah, so so he just said it's not an ape man. Which is odd, right? That's an odd way to frame Dryopithecus as it's not an ape man. Well, yeah, we know that. We know it's a stem African ape. Why would you? Why? Why? Why are you making that argument? That doesn't make any sense. I can we can we go uh, can we go back to when when the image is shown? Perhaps. Oh, Peter, can you do that? Can we go back like uh, twenty seconds? Like, may, like maybe maybe the maybe the, the the document itself explains that Triopithecus is like a more basal ape and not specifically a hominin. Or or did we 
like I don't know. Did we used to think that Triopithecus was a hominin? Maybe it's maybe it's, maybe it's outdated. It's possible. I I don't know about that. Maybe it's. Outdated. I also don't you want, know. You want to I go back yeah, to this? I don't think it really matters all that much, really, at any rate, because like. Oh, sorry. He didn't. He circled Oreopithecus, which is also a stem African ape. Um. Which I mean, the the point remains. We, it's the same thing we just said. Um. <sighs> Like for what for what I can read in in this, I don't see there's a I don't see there's any claim about Triopithecus being an, a homonym. Like it it says it was one one of the first of the great ape fossils that was discovered in Europe. Yeah, that, that's all. It, that, that's all it says right here. So yeah, I think we are doing more more thinking mm. about this yeah. than than he has. Anyway, we can just we can I mean, let it go. Yeah, yeah. We need to move on. Yeah, you're, move you're on. definitely putting more effort in looking up the species on this chart on the fly than this dude has done in the 27 years of researching frauds. So Triceratops files is a lie. Yeah, you're you're absolutely correct. So why is he why is he like xing them out? That doesn't make any sense. They're not well, those, fake. Those, they're th real. They, no, no, but those but exist. those aren't human. Those aren't human. He, what what that's what what I noticed what he said because he thinks that the one on on the far left is already human which I have no clue how he got there yeah i don't know he, he said he said can, most can, can, most I... of the species in this pictures weren't humanoids okay, but they, they were not ape men he he said they were not yeah, ape men yeah too. But but it it already it all it already says it like here like in, in you can see like it's it's very vague but you can if you look closely to at Pliopithecus it says one of the earliest proto apes mm -hmm. pro Pliopithecus had to look like modern gibbons basically although yeah and then proconsul known from numerous fragments adding like it's very vague I can I can almost not read it the ancestor of the chimpanzee and perhaps of the gorilla. Although I think that's that's outdated idea. I think Pocans is like a very basal uh, hominoid, right? Yeah. Like out, like out, like outside, out, even outside the Gibbon group, yes. or not? Yeah. Yeah. So, it, so it, they, they don't, they don't, they, they these don't claim that they are uh, like hominins. They are not claim, even though, even though these things are very outdated still, but. They, they are not claiming that they are ape men or hom hominins at least yeah yeah except except for like here it says except for ramapithecus on the, like the one on the far right well it was the, thought to be a hominin yeah. for a little while it, yeah it, that was thought yeah mm -hmm. yeah ramapithecus the earliest man the earliest man like primate found to found found so far it, it, it says here under under ramapithecus which is also yeah, a bad way to describe that but whatever yeah at the time this mm -hmm. was like what the 60s wasn't it when that when did that come out yeah that... i'm sorry like, I if, could be if, wrong. If, if i if i were if i were to uh like yeah 65 be... 1965 yeah. come on yeah. this is really the best we're gonna do is like a <laughs> we're really looking at a picture drawn freaking what like 60 years ago that's really our primary concern okay all right whatever we can continue his colleagues all that's important too you have to do the interview the side interviews we realized that 10 of there's only 14 animals in here that 10 of the 14 okay. animals that he put on here that we've all believed were not ape men. He knew, let me repeat that. He knew 10 of the animals were not ape men. Now, wait, pause, 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 pause. Define what I'm saying by ape. Okay, wait, actually, oh, never mind. Let it play. I want to hear what he says. Then we'll respond. Ape man. An ape man Sorry. is not an ape. It's not a human, Homo sapiens. It's an animal, theoretical animal on the line going from an ape. To a human, the evolution okay, scientists pause. call them hominins, hominoids. Okay, pause. Okay, so hominins. So it, it was right. He, he's referring. So he's saying anything that's not Homo sapiens, and I guess presumably anything that's closer to Homo sapiens than it is chimpanzees, which is hominins. 
Now, mm-hmm. according to Zalinger's image, there are 15, not 14, primates. And of the 15, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I guess eight. Okay. So eight of the 15. Well, I guess, it, again, it kind of depends on how you define it. Because, like, one of this is one of these is Paranthropus, which is obviously not on our line. It's like a... Well, then I guess it also depends on if you crop out, like, early Homo sapiens. Uh... He has Solo Man on here, like, but like, this like is the, 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 Homo like the, way, like the way Werner says, any, any non, hum, a non-Homo sapien hominin, basically. If it's a non-homo sapien hominin, that drops to like one, two, three, three. Okay. Um, that's like three. It's Australopithecus, Paranthropus, and then advanced. Oh, sorry, four. Okay, and then yeah, Australopithecus, Paranthropus, advanced Australopithecus, and Homo erectus. It's four. Yeah. So yeah. the other eleven are Pliopithecus, Proconsul, Dryopithecus, Oreopithecus, and Ramopithecus, which are all non-hominins so they are non-hominins so one two three four five so ten but but, but many of them are still transitional well right i mean so ten of the fifteen are hominins so five are non-hominins but still transitional and then of the ten four are um four are are non homo sapien hominins now he classifies two Homo erectus specimens as um, as as humans. Oh, well, sorry, I forgot. He also has Neanderthals on here, which I guess at the time were considered just humans, uh, not their own separate species, because that was more like in the '90s, I think, uh, when they were finally figured out to be a separate species. So, okay, so it, whatever. At any rate. Ten of them. Ten are are hominins. So he's wrong when he says when he says ten of them are not hominins. He is factually incorrect when he says that. Like he is just mm-hmm. wrong. Just, just so we all are clear on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hominids, whatever. But it just eight man. You know what an eight man is. Clark Howe knew that animal one, Pleopithecus, number two, Proconsul, number three, Dryopithecus, uh-huh. number uh-huh. four, Oreopithecus, and Paranthropus uh-huh. were not eight men. They wait, were not on the road to Homo sapien, as his chart showed. And we have that wait, 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 clearly wait, wait. documented pause. in the book and the accompanying. Wait, pause. Okay. He's, for one thing, he skipped Ramopithecus and jumped to Paranthropus. Um, Paranthropus is a hominin. It's a descendant, or it's closely related to um, to uh, uh, Australopithecus africanus. So basically, the the Australopith tree kind of forks, and you have like is it the is it the, is it, is it the robust uh, the yeah. robust ones? So yeah. yeah, yeah, you have the so basically the Australopith tree kind of forks, and you have the more graceful Australopiths like Australopithecus afarensis and Sediba, and then us, the Homo. And then on the other hand, you have the robust Australopiths like Australopithecus africanus, which then leads to Paranthropus. Um, you know what an ape man is. How you didn't define it. That's true. He didn't. He kind of flipped. He flip flopped. He said it's not an ape, but it's not Homo sapien. And then he said it's a hominin. And then he said it's a hominid. And then he said, you know what I mean? So he gave like three different. Um, or yeah, three or four different definitions, kind of all in the same breath. He's very, he's very vague. Like, like again, at, at first he says, like, oh, it's it's neither an ape nor a man. It's like a, a transit, an intermediate between the ape to man line. And then he says, like, oh, but they, the scientists call them hominins or hominoids, even though those are not uh, interchangeable. <laughs> yeah, so no, I would yeah. love to talk to werner here like i would love to get him on on the show and like just pick his brain about this stuff because i don't think there's i don't i don't think there's he knows all you'll find is brain soup 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Opening video series. He also knew, and I can't believe I missed this. He also knew that the last five animals here were homo sapiens. It, this one, number 10, is called early homo sapiens. Well, here, can you, you pause again? More than one homo sapiens in this. Here, pause. Um, so, okay, so the last five are modern man, Cro Magnon man, Neanderthal man, Rhodesian man, and Solo man. Well, and six is. Um, Six is early Homo sapiens. Wait, hold on. One, two. No, it says fifteen here. Can he not count? It says fifteen. Uh, maybe he can't. You know, brain soup. I don't know. Um, uh, maybe it's, maybe it's ca counting from like this the second image exclusively, like like from from uh, nine, ten, like from, from nine on. I think. I, I I don't know. I'm just guessing. <laughs> This Jackson, yeah. this is his first yeah. 18 years of reading. We're, we're going to get to his first 18 years of doing math later, I guess. <laughs> I guess so. I don't Maybe. Know. Yeah. Uh, which, hey, because guts, it says early hey, guts Gibbon. Homo sapiens. Oh, Guts and Gibbons in the chat? Nice. Yes. Well, we, we called her because we were talking about ape stuff, I guess. Hi, Jackson. I can't stay. I met the this Werner guy's a joke and ordered his books. Yes. Yes. Please do a, a full breakdown of it. I, I I wait with bated breath to see your takedown of this guy. You'll do way better than I do. All right. Anyway, let's keep going. Chart since it's the road to Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens, Homo sapiens, Homo sapiens, Homo sapiens. So right there. 10 frauds that he knew were wrong, but he put them in the chart anyway to make the case wait, pause. for evolution. It was terrible. Pause. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. He said 10 frauds. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so Pliopithecus, Proconsul, Dryopithecus, Oreopithecus, Paranthropus. Okay, that's five. Then one, two, three... Four, five, I get. Wait, uh, okay. Then, yeah, one. Uh, what? Are, is he saying, like, the last five right before modern man? I guess that'd be one, I two, I think so. three, four, five. Okay, I get it. So, the five I just mentioned, then early Homo sapiens, Solo man, Rhodesian man, Neanderthal man, and cro -Magnon man, all of whom... All of whom he is apparently classifying as just Homo sapiens, and also calling them frauds. So his definition of fraud is just either not hominin or also Homo sapien. This is the most baffling definition of fraud I've ever heard. Which I guess it's not really a definition; he's just providing examples. But this is truly insane um jackson but you, crazy. You, you, you don't get it because oh. he, he already said at the start he doesn't have time enough to explain the mechanism used to 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 find these frauds right so we'll, we'll have to I wait guess. for that until the video comes out i think i don't know i guess i i yeah what'd you say nestle oh i was just saying like uh, so basically, you're saying like every stem human, or, or, or everything but a stem human is a fraud. Yes. Yeah. Which, okay. So the thing about what I also find very funny about this is Cro-Magnon, which is a, a goofy term that we we talk about in uh, the Cro-Magnon's tale, which was like what the second video in our it's, series. It's, it's not it's not filet mignon or any re anything related to filet mignon. Or sorry, no, it was the third video because it was yeah. the Tasmanian's tale, then the farmer's tale, then the Cro-Magnon's tale. Yeah. Um, when we did the Cro-Magnon's tale, we talked about um, the word Cro-Magnon doesn't really mean much of anything. It just means the Homo sapiens who left Africa around fifty to sixty thousand years ago. And then up to the Neolithic Revolution, like twelve thousand years ago, right? Like that's that interval 
from 50,000 years ago to 12,000 years ago is Cro-Mignon, which is nonsense. That's a nonsense term. Um, so anyways, uh, so yeah, that's a silly term. But also in that video, we talked about like, what does, what does behavioral modernity mean? Because cro hail the origin of behavioral modernity. And there's a big debate in anthropology as to what that means. Uh, it's all, all really neat stuff. We kind of cover some of it uh, in the Chromion's tale, go watch that video. Um, remember, so, uh, like for the for fourteen is Chromion, but thirteen. What was thirteen? Neanderthal. Neanderthal. All right. So it says Neanderthal. Then the two before that are two misidentified uh, Homo erectus. So mm -hmm. it's um, Solo Man and Rhodesian Man, uh, and then early Homo sapiens. Which remember, early Homo sapiens look different from anatomically modern homo sapiens that's why there is a difference in what they're called they look different we have a more gracile skeleton than early homo sapiens had they they were more robust than us so yeah, it's, it's, it's early like early homo sapiens is still like closer to us than the neanderthals and the denisovans right yes yeah yeah. Well, because you're right, right, because Homo sapiens is everything closer to us following the split from Neanderthals and Denisovans. And so, yeah. it's a bit because the Neanderthals were also a bit more robust than us. So right. maybe maybe it's like uh, the, the, this early version is like oh, it's it's uh, like uh, th theaters the line closer to like the, ne the Neanderthal line, basically, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, Kyle Pratt, in 27 years, he never opened Wikipedia. Yeah, exactly. He he never looked at it in this whole, the whole time he's been doing this. He never thought, why don't I just do like a brief Google search of these? Well, what do you see about that? Truly astounding stuff. He spent, remember, according to him, he has spent 27 years on this. Baffling, baffling stuff. Like when was this? Well, when was his book published? Like recently? I'm pretty sure because like he's he Eric is interviewing him like about this recent stuff. Uh, I'm pretty yeah. sure this is like, all recent material. Let me from, look up from what Warner. I yeah from what I got this is this is a, a very recent thing. He's just come out with his his books. Yeah, this book just came out. Um, here it is. Evolution, the Grand Experiment, uh, Amazon. It says, what's the date? When was it published? It was published. Well, that that might be his earlier Sorry, work. Sorry, I'm that, searching. That that's. I think that title is from seven years ago. Oh, uh, this one said. Sorry, this one's from 2008. Is this the same book? No. No. No, this is volume one. I need volume five. I need volume five. Uh, where's volume five? Because that's the one that just came out. Uh, let me try again. Uh, book volume five. Grand Experiment, volume one. Living Fossils, volume one. Goodness gracious, where is it? Books, biography, latest update. The Grand Experiment. No, that's Volume 1. Where the heck is Volume 5? Am I crazy? Don't answer that. <laughs> Erica. Erica, if you're still listening, can you tell us when the book came out? She's probably gone. <sighs> oh, wait. Here it is. Volume 5. I found it. <clears throat> At least I think I did. Nope, this is volume two. That is not volume five. Uh, you might also like question mark. I probably won't. <laughs> it says volume five on the freaking picture. I, I I I see I see on Amazon a uh, hardcover volume five February two thousand twenty four. So it's just yeah. Really it came cool. out this year. Yeah. This five, freaking yeah. year. Okay. Oh, also Savage Premarital Mitosis Coba for two dollars says I could do better in twenty seven minutes. Yeah, you probably could, almost certainly. Um, 
so yeah, this okay. book came out mm-hmm. this year, and he did not do like any Google searching at all. Amazing stuff. Like, like as as we, as we mentioned, like the like the, this image, like we also have problems with this image. Like it's it's outdated. It's uh, the the the, uh, the linear depiction of these uh, things are is also a bit uh, misleading. So. So you you can even you, we can even also criticize this image, but of course none of these things are false in the sense that they were made up. Like these things are real fossils in of themselves. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. none of these are frauds. He's yeah he's claiming that fossils, which objectively exist, are frauds, not because they don't exist. He's not saying these fossils don't exist. He has arbitrarily decided that. Mm-hmm. Any non hominins are frauds because reasons. Too transitional. And, too and, transitional. Yeah. Right, they're too transitional. And any Homo sapiens are not transitional enough. So, anyway, okay, all right, we can keep going. Terribly influential, and it was infamous, not famous. It was infamous now because it was really a lie. That's one example. <laughs> And that is still the chart being used today. I mean, they might have replaced the people, but they're still trying to present the same basic concept and allow that to happen. So this is based on actual fossil finds. And you're saying those fossils right there, we know from those fossils that those were just apes, just like modern day for some. Some were just human, just no, like humans. No, that's not what he today. said. And so it's not wait, 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 pause. It's the draw. Pause. Okay, so no, he actually didn't say any of that at all. And wow, we really paused on a. <laughs> this is certainly an image. Um, it looks straight out I, of a Harry Potter movie. He, he's casting a spell right there. All he needs is a so wand. Yeah. Swish and flick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but he did not say. He didn't say either that the non hominins were just like modern apes. If you don't believe me, go find a modern Dryopithecus. Good luck, Eric. And he didn't say that the Homo sapiens presented, most of which weren't, or several of which weren't Homo sapiens anyways, um, are just like modern Homo sapiens. Because again, they aren't. There is no one alive today like a Neanderthal. No one. Zero people. There are zero people alive today uh, like early Homo sapiens, like non anatomically modern Homo sapiens, there are zero people alive. Like, like uh, there are zero people alive today. Like uh, the the Cro-Magnons, right? Like, th- that's not what he said. First, he didn't even say that. Oh, mm. this is so frustrating. It's so <laughs> stupid. Every part of this is so stupid. And he says he wasted almost 30 years of his life on this crap. Oh, okay. Oh, I, 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 I said swish and flick, but that's the uh, the movement from Wingardium Leviosa. But I think he's stupid. No, no, spell. no, 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 no. It's, it's Leviosa, <laughs> not Leviosa. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that, but I think, but I think he's, I think he's doing. I think he's doing the spell stupefy because it's uh, it's very stupefying what he does. Yeah, I I think I stu- I stupefied yeah. him. I think that's that's how this worked. And exactly the 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 right moment too. If people want to take this and MTG and Photoshop, I don't know something in his hands. Go right ahead. Send, I have to. I have to point to out. Uh, Brian Stevens called me out. Brian Stevens called me out. He said, "Wait." Uh, isn't Marjorie Taylor Green a Cro-Magnon? Sorry, you're right. My my mistake. Although, do we really want to give her to them? They probably don't want her either. Let's be real. You know. Okay. Anyway, we can. I, th- I think I think the vote's still out on what Marjorie Taylor Green exactly is. I I don't. He might not even be in the family of the great apes. <laughs> you don't know. The the jet the jet is now amazing. Fossilus disappearus, expellibranus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I mean, I mean, we can move on. Sorry about that. We can move on. Drawing that ended up being the evidence more than the fossil ended up being the evidence. Is that and, kind of and accurate? And that's correct. That's correctly stated. But it's worse than that, Eric. He knew it. Wow. See, the guy that made the chart 
if you read his readings, and we got his quotes throughout this chapter here, he knew that Pleopithecus was like a gibbon, a modern gibbon, and it wasn't Wait, pause. ancestral humans. He wrote pause. No, he can't be this stupid. He can't. There's no way he's this dumb. There's no, I refuse to believe he is this dumb. You are telling me, you are telling me that Carl Werner looked at this article, the, the original like Zallinger uh, image, and saw that the, the paragraph that was describing Pleopithecus said that it's Gibbon-like, and he thinks nobody noticed this for 60 years? Are you serious? Uh, also, I think Pleopithecus is a Catherine as well. Right. Uh, it's Stim Catherine, yeah. Yeah, Stim yeah. Catherine. But, like, he can't be that dumb. Please, he can't possibly. There's no way. I refuse to believe this. Well, there's an explanation, this Jackson. Has to be a gag. He 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 might not be that dumb, but he could very well be this dishonest. That's, that's the only other option, right? That is the only other option. And by the way, for people like the, who the are wondering, options... the still right now is him looking at the still of Eric just previously. <laughs> um yeah, that's probably true. He's looking at it. He's stupefied. Yeah. yeah. But just like, those are the only options. The options are either he genuinely thinks that nobody noticed this paragraph in one of the most famous images of evolution of all time, or he's just lying. Like, he's... he knows this. There's there. Those are the only options. There, there's nothing else. He spent... 27 years doing research on this. I'm going with dishonest. There's seven years between volume one and volume five. I'm still going with dishonest. Seven, there's more, right? You said it was from 2008? I thought it was from seven years ago. That might be the, the volume four. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, well, volume one was from 2008. Volume five yeah. is from 2024. Ah, okay. So that's 16 years between volume one and volume... Okay, yeah. I'm still going with this, yeah. honest. Okay, yeah. I mean, that's fair. Yeah. That's very fair. But he puts it in the chart anyway. He knew that proconsul looked like a chimp, was not an ancestor to humans. Wait, no, that's and he also put not it true. In the chart. See, that's that's the fraud, and that's... It's Wait, a pause. Very serious level of fraud. Pause. Again, how stupid do you have to be to make this argument? How stupid? The chart is not about specifically hominins. It is about the line from, or is it is like a line from stem catarines. So that's the group that includes apes and old world monkeys. Up two humans so it starts outside of the hominins works its way through the hominins to humans that's the point of the chart is you can go all the way back to outside the humans and draw this direct connection like that's the point that is the point of the chart i i i just categorically refuse to believe that like he thinks no one thought of this until now there's no way. Also, Procounsel was not a chimpanzee. It like wasn't. A Procounsel was also plant degraded still, like a, like a like a monkey basically. It was it was, it was still like it, it it was tailless like an ape. Yeah. But the way it but the way it locomoted through the trees was like flat footed, like a monkey basically. Yet Procounsel, we are more closely related to gibbons than we are to Procounsel. That is how far away it is from us. It is outside. It is a stem hominoid. And again, he said he spent 27 years on this, and he can't even. Maybe it was just a, a like just a, a Freudian slip. I don't know. But he said 
Pro console was chimpanzee like. That's wrong. It's not chimpanzee like, like at all. It was more similar in a lot of its characteristics to monkeys, not chimps. As it's often described as an as an uh, monkey like ape. Yeah. Yeah. Pro console. Yeah. Oh my god, he's so stupid, or maybe or maybe not stupid. Maybe he's just really dishonest and they think no one's gonna check him. <laughs> the, 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 uh, Speedy says they are the ha- they, they are the hackfish of apes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yep. He has to be making money off of his books, so I'm still going with dishonest. Oh, and Chimps for ref- are monkeys. You are correct, Smitty. For reference, uh, Jackson, in 30 seconds, we'll be halfway through the video. Oh, cool. Nice. So. Continue? Yes. I don't think we should dwell on here because I have so many more, Eric. I, I yeah, to don't dwell on more. this. Well, before you do, because this is <laughs> I wouldn't either. Be so this is all in a book. Anybody can get this book and look at all these frauds. Yes. Why is Eric There's excited about this? The one book is called Evolution and Grand Experiment, Volume 3, Untold Stories of Human Evolution, and Volume 4, nine categories of overturned eight men. You will get to see this. This is from one of those two books. So yeah, it's it's available. And I'd encourage everybody to read it. Anybody can read this. A high school kid, eighth grade could. I don't know if you want high schoolers or eighth graders reading this. Yeah. They might realize you're an idiot. In all fairness, I like I like the way the covers are designed. So that there is that. He had a good designer for the covers. They are nice covers. Yes. That's but that's true. that's basically it. What was the saying? Don't judge your book. Twenty-seven both. years. By its cover, yeah. yeah. Twenty-seven years. You're telling me in twenty. This is like what I think. When he says twenty-seven years researching, like what does he mean? What papers could he possibly have read? Uh, because I, he said, remember, he started out by saying he read all sorts of papers. He read papers in German, in French, all over the place. What I think he meant was he did not read technical literature. I mean, there's no way he could have read technical literature and said this much stupid crap. What he must have meant was he read uh, like popular like news press articles in German and French. And he translated those and used those as his argument. And then spent 27 years That's figuring out how can I make this sound wrong and believable? Because I think that's where he spent most yeah. of his time. Yeah, th- this is... God, this is garbage. Okay. Anyway, we can keep going. Science trained person can read this very simple language and only takes you about two hours. Two hours to read it because there's a thousand photographs in each book. So it only takes you two hours. It took him 27 years. Okay. I, I, <laughs> I can believe that. I'd be kind of embarrassed if I'd be a little embarrassed if if someone read a book of mine in two hours, you know, unless it's like a book for children, I guess. I don't know. That's my kind of book right there. <laughs> exactly. It's my kind of book, too. So I'd encourage you. If you're scared of this topic, don't be scared anymore. Just pick up this book. It's meant to, to, to help you understand what they did. And it's highly vetted. Many scientists have read this, and they haven't found any errors in it yet. This is a vetted book. Could he be, like, it's been read for by defamation? Other PhDs, and by it's highly researched. And you are in for a surprise. Okay. All right, let's I know oh, I am I'm surprised all right. Why would he include these if they were fraud? I'm gonna we're gonna have to get the book and watch it. And your video series, I've watched two of your eight we're gonna have video to watch series. The book. Unbelievable, by the way. You Did gotta you hear check that, out Peter? the video series that accompanies these books. I'm gonna watch. Did you hear him say we're gonna get the book and watch it? Yeah. Yeah, because it has more pictures. That's what he said. Yes, because it has more pictures than text. Yeah, you you could say you you, you watched um, the book. Or, or it has more pictures than your average comic book. 
Oh, he, may, he may have crosswired uh, to two thoughts. Like, there are like a video series as well. So, he may have like uh, blended these ideas by accident. Like, oh, we were going to watch the video series. Oh, no, the, the book. Or, yeah. I've been, I've been oh, looking for the video the series point, because it's liable. Yeah. I've been looking for the video series because that would be a good one to, to, to review here, but I can't find anything. That would be good. Probably behind uh, the probably paywall. They, like they, they, exist, uh, they exist on the internet as like random clips, but not not like in a neat order or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, probably. So random clips are now oh. a video series. I'll, I'll make a note of that. I can feel my heart rate going up. I, it's, 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 probably if you uh, do, don't do it, I don't recommend it. But if you buy the the like the video or or like I I don't know how how they are being sold right now, but uh, probably in like a VHS, not not VHS anymore. But <laughs> uh, now those are the illegal copies but, uh, that how... uh, Hovind Hovind the Greater, yeah. the bigger, the, right, the right. worrying. <laughs> Hoven but, will, but I... will give them to you along with like cyanide pills. You know? <laughs> although, although cyanide Eric pills. Eric yeah. still has the entire uh, VHS copying uh, mat material from his dad because he never gave that back. <laughs> so we we Kyle don't know. Says, I bet five dollars his volume five has hyperlinks in it. Yeah, like the Standing for Truth book. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, yeah. that would be so funny. Mm -hmm. That would be so very funny. <sighs> okay, we keep going. It's the other six. They are so good. Okay, another fraud. We've all heard of Homo habilis. Now, what? Homo habilis was supposed to be the creature between Australopithecus, three feet tall, three and a half feet tall, and Homo erectus, six feet tall. So he's supposed to be about four and a half feet tall, Wait, and you're supposed to have a what? brain between Pause. ape size, which is 500, and you. Pause. First of all, not all Homo erectus are six feet tall. That was like one population. Like most Homo erectus were like around four or so feet tall, right? Four to five feet. They were not all six feet tall. That's just wrong. That is just factually incorrect. Oh my god. How is he this stupid? How does he keep just <laughs> lying? Homo erectus. Let's see. Let's look up sizes. Yes. Size ranged widely from 4 foot 9 inches to 6 foot 1 inch. And he's just like, oh, Homo erectus was 6 feet tall. Idiot. Absolute buffoonery. <laughs> Why is he so stupid? He is stupefied. <laughs> we can keep going. Human size, 1,000, and it was about 700. This whole Homo bellus was Wait, complete pause. sham and complete fraud. Pause, 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 pause. Hold on. I got to see this. Uh, I'm not taking his word for anything. I'm not taking his word for anything. Cranial capacity, homo erectus. Okay. All right. Okay. So homo erectus, about 1,000. That's what he said. About 1,000 uh, cc's. And then australopithecus, cranial capacity, 420 to 550. And then homo habilis, homo habilis, habilis, cranial capacity, Oops, I misspelled that. My bad. Just under 600 cubic centimeters. Okay. So you have on the one hand, Australopithecus 450 to 550, sorry, 420 to 550, Homo habilis 600, Homo erectus about 1,000. Okay, all right, let's keep going. We're on board. And I know those are strong words. Hang on to your seat if you believe in evolution, but I'm just going to show you the level of fraud here by um, Philip Tobias from the University of Witchwatersand in South Africa. His first fossil that he found was OH7. Okay. And um, this is his published photograph. Can you see that A and B? I can, yes. Yeah. 
that's his published photograph. That's the only thing that the other scientists saw, unless they happened to run over to uh, Nairobi. Here, pause. Well, Demi and I. Pause. O H seven. Have a listen. That's not O H seven. I know, big shock, but that is not all of O H seven. Peter, would I? Is it possible if I send you a picture? Can you put it up? Is that possible? Is it? It's not possible, is it? Yes, it is. Oh, it is. Okay, cool. I'm gonna send you a picture via Twitter. This is O H seven. I'm gonna put it in our Twitter chat. That's not the whole picture. That's not what I just saw. Hold on. Okay, here's the whole picture. Copy. Uh, whoops. Let me go Twitter. All right, Peter, I just sent it to you via Twitter. Would you mind putting that up on the... Um... On the, uh, the screen. So that's so what you're looking at right now on screen, everybody, is what you just heard him say. Werner said is the only piece of OH7, which is Havilis. He said this is the only piece. Now, what Peter has now just put on screen is the rest of OH7. Uh, did, did, did he say did, 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 that was the only piece? Did he yeah. say that? That is what it sounded like to me. I could be wrong, mm. but I thought that's what he said. Peter, would you okay, mind? Okay, can we, can we uh, replay a bit, maybe, to make sure? Yeah. I thought that's what he said, but I could be wrong. I could. I don't want to misrepresent him. Let's just, if we could go back like 20 seconds and hear that again. <clears throat> Okay, yeah. Tobias right from the University of Witchwatershan in South Africa. His first fossil that he found was OH7. Okay. And um, this is his published photograph. Can you see that A and B? I can, yes. Yeah. That's his published photograph. That's the only thing that the other scientists saw, unless they happened to run over to uh, Nairobi. That is the only thing, only thing. the other yeah. scientists saw. Peter, can you put the other uh, picture back on, please? I, I, he's, he he's heavily implying this is the only thing that was found. Yeah, yeah. So you can see I, the cranium back there. That's the, the or the skull cap, whatever it is. Uh, you can see that in the back. That's what he's referring to. Yeah, the parts, that, the parts A and B. Skull are, cap. The parts A and B are, are clearly in, in the back. You, you can't yep, see that's, those. That's parts A and B back there. That is what he is claiming Tobias only found. Clearly no, 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 not. no. He he didn't he didn't say that that was the only thing he found. He said that was the only thing he only shared. Thing he reported. He shared because right. people had to go which, to Nairobi in order to see the rest of the things that he found, which are mm. in this picture that we got without going to Nairobi. Uh. This, th this is such, just, I don't even know what to say at this point. What, what is there to say? I mean, genuinely. How, how do I even, how do you respond to this? Like, other than just, here's actually basically, the picture, he's just lying. Basically, what he failed to do in 27 years, you did in less than 27 seconds. Yeah, those look like finger and toe bones along with the partial jaw. Yeah, that I mean that that probably true. I don't know. Yeah, it's it, it also says well, like this is even a Wikipedia article on, on OH7, and it, and it mentions that the you have a, a fragmented part of the lower mandible, uh, an isolated maxillary molar, and uh, two parietal bones, and twenty-one finger hand and wrist bones. Yeah, twenty-one finger hand and wrist bone. Hey, yeah. It's a, it's uh, admittedly it's not a whole lot, but still pretty significant quantity. Like mo like most considering that most fossils are like isolated teeth, 
it is this is, this is, this is a lot still. Yeah. Okay, we yeah. can keep going. Well, Demi and I decided to go photograph the original fossils. And when we- In Nairobi. Were, in Nairobi. And when we photographed them, and I got mm -hmm. back, I was like, what is going on here? This is the photograph that we took here. <laughs> and this is a fossil. And there's something different. What's different? Now, by the way, this is a type specimen. This is a specimen, the first one they found, and that we're going to make all judgments about Homo habilis about this hereafter, based on this fossil. But if you look at letter B here, there is no letter B. There's no bone there. What happened to it? It was I think that's rock matrix. Plastered to the Wait, type pause. specimen. As, as you could clearly I'm see. Sure in, that's... No, as you could clearly see in the picture, there are two parts, right? So Yes. In the back. And you can see that uh -huh. the, the one on the picture is the one on the top right. And yes. the one that he has I, it might be the one on, on the left. I, I'm not entirely sure. Well, there's two of them. It's it's A and B. He's looking at both yes, of them. Yeah, but A, A and B on his on his picture are on one part. So if... no, I think he's no, he's referring to both of the skull pieces. It, one of them is A and one of them is B. See if you go back to it. Yeah, yeah go back. Because see, one of them has the big chunk missing. Yeah, but he says so. He says the 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 one the picture on the right, the colored picture is the one that he took the one on the yes. left okay, is, so yeah, is the one that was published the original the original yes. yeah that's what he's saying yes now it looks like the angle's different for one thing on these pictures yeah it looks like they're not taken from the same angle mm -hmm. uh, which is what uh bitcores is pointing out um it, when the fossil was found and published at that time the only thing you could see without going to south africa was the published photo uh i'm i'm maybe? curious i'm curious Even because still, that's a really bad way of phrasing it no because the original pictures has a and b on it so if we go back oh, to your saying. picture okay, i see what you're saying part b yes. could be it's one of the parts that are lying underneath the the bigger skull parts because oh, they're I, referring I to a yeah, yeah, different yeah. a different part that have been that has been so, found I, i'm Yes, I misunderstood what you were saying. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's yeah, it's it's one of the so it's the top one. Yeah, the top right one is has the parts A and B on it. Yes, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yes. My bad. My mistake, Peter. Um. Yeah. So he's saying so he took that and took the photos of it. Took photos of it today, compared it to the original, uh, which is yeah, what he's saying is A and B, and he's saying B is missing now. Yeah, if you B, don't take a picture of B, B up there, if you don't take a picture of part B, then it's probably missing in your picture. So B is, I'm pretty sure, the rock matrix that the bone was in. I'm pretty sure. So the it, fact that it like, could be the because rock it, matrix was removed because it looks from different. The fossil is like it looks different. So it's it has a completely different structure. As, as you can see, the, the bone part is... Well, as... Right, because they took the rock off. Yes. Yeah, they removed more of the rock from the fossil, which was B, which is what part B is referring to. And because B was the rock and it's gone, the fossil's going to look different. Again, is he stupid? It, like if you if you look at the is obviously not part of the bone no if you look closely it is complete it's it's completely different material it's it's got a completely different structure yeah. than uh, all of the other very, very bony smooth. parts yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot smoother yeah it is obviously not bone just like his brain it's a lot smoother <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well that's the thing dm it's it's not that a piece of the bone is missing. It's a piece of the original rock is missing. They've removed more of the rock to just have the bone. And, and Werner is saying it's fraud 
that they removed the rock from the original specimen. Like, okay, you got him, I guess. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, but we're talking to people who also said that it was a fraud to reconstruct Lucy's hip, which was later That's confirmed by, by other uh, hips that it, it was actually correct because they were altering it. Yes, right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, oh my gosh, this is so bad. <laughs> Continue. Unfortunately, yeah. we still got 20 minutes. Now, that's unheard of. That just, just you just don't do that unless you make it really clear a reason you'd have to do that. But that's just it unheard is of. unheard of, but not and for the reasons you think. We noticed on the <laughs> this is a left skull piece. He started to add what appears to be bones from other animals to his skull. What you know, if you have a puzzle like fit like here, you know it's pretty clear that that piece fits there. But when you have a straight line on right here where these green arrows are. It's easy to put a straight line fossil next to a straight line fossil. Now you don't notice it over here because it's black and white. It's all one colors, piece, you flip idiot. It over here. This looks like <laughs> two different animals, A and B. This is the same bone just flipped over. Look at A. It's a different color <laughs> and it's connected with a straight line. And when it didn't fit, then he put a little plaster in there. I just want to shoot it's over the here same and show you. Bone. He also altered the other side. This is his published photograph of the right skull piece. Here okay. it is. You just don't really know what's going on. It looks a little funny. I don't really think, see a problem. But then when you come over here and take the photograph, the color photograph that either I or I guess I took this photograph, and then flip this over to look on the inside of the right skull piece, a straight line, a funny colored bone, and you could actually say these here are the same situation. And he, if you go then looking at the small print, he says, that maybe more than one animal was used to put the type specimen together, which again, that is that is a no-no. You cannot do it. A type specimen is a type specimen. You can't be interpreting it. Wait. That was pause. the first of pause a four. Second. Okay, so his central complaint here is one that straight lines exist. Mm -hmm. And two, that the bones are slightly different colors. This is like conspiracy level shenanigans. That's all this is. <laughs> this is he insane. Is, he is spending a lot of yarn right here. Yeah. Yeah. Your bones are not all the same color. There's going to be a little bit of variation in terms of your bone color. And then, of course, there's going to be variation in terms of the color when they're subject to like pressure and time and soil chemistry. Like, obviously. It. <laughs> straight lines and the bones are slightly different colors also saying the as hold on i, I gotta check let me check oh seven habilis he said that maybe some of the bones were used from other animals i don't see anything on the wikipedia page that indicates that <laughs> So I don't. Maybe they. Maybe the. Uh, maybe Tobias was saying it's possible that bones were incorporated from other animals, but it doesn't seem to be the case because they don't say anything about it here. I'm actually curious. Can we find the uh, the original paper in which he coins Havilus? Is this it? Is this the article? Can I get this article? Can I have that? Is that a thing I can has? Question mark. Oh, uh oh. Oh, this isn't it. This is a book review. Dang. Wait, is it a, a book? It is a book. Oh, lame. No way. There's no way he did that. There's hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, I, th I think I, I think I found the original paper. Uh, oh, uh, where it? What did you? Okay. I I like I see I see a link on the Wikipedia page. No, that's that's not it. That's the um. 
an oh a new piece oh uh, all right maybe i don't know <sighs> okay i don't know yeah whatever Bits, i don't even Bits, care at this point Bitscore says it sounds like Werner was talking about skull uh, fragments that bones from other animals were incorporated into the skull fragment to oh, make up. Oh, I see what you're saying. So just not yeah, not that the other ones of the same species is made of multiple. Yes, but from different no, you're species. Right. That's a good point. That's, yeah, that's a, a good at least point, Bitcoin, that's I didn't... that's how I interpreted that as well. By the way. Because he was complaining. Okay. I didn't think about it that way. He was, yeah, he was complaining that this is a, 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 a type specific skull and you can't then put other animal parts on it because then it's not type specific anymore. That was w what he said. But okay, 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 wait, wait, wait. So, so he, if I'm he, understanding correctly, so he misunderstood what Tobias said. So Tobias was saying that, like, if I'm understanding correctly, when when he uncovered these bones, these parts of OH7, they were, like, associated with other animal bones. Is that what you're saying? No, no, he said they like were using actual... other animal bones to make up the no, skull, I understand which, that. Which, which is why we have these straight lines, and he would just take any other animal part that he had no, yes. no, with Peter, the straight line. No, I get what he's saying. I understand he's saying that. I'm saying, I thought Bitcores was saying, is Bitcores saying, uh, or, well, okay. Uh, the say, saying the same thing. I think it's saying, saying okay, the same so thing. Do we think Tobias maybe meant in the original paper that... Jamie um, E. found the original the... paper. Oh, okay, cool. Did you you found it? Let's see. Is that in here anywhere? Because I'm trying to understand what he means by that. Because I'm very confused. Uh, the recent uh, a new species. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yes. That's, that's, that's the same paper I, I just found as well. Yeah. Oh, that's so, when you found okay. a, a new a new okay. species a new species right. of uh... the genus Homo from yeah. Well, I'm trying to. Uh, I'll show up at the scene, blah, blah, blah. Oh, man, this is... I don't think I could read all this. Implications, maybe? Yeah, there's too much for me to read. Uh, just kind of on the fly here. Um, I think we, we can give uh, God, uh, God's okay, given the opportunity to go to dive deep into this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, anyway. But I, I don't I don't see any any indication that I, any sort like he's he's just, he's just saying like oh they are di they are different colors so they must be from different animals basically like that, that's, that's what Werner's that's, saying yeah like it, that, 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 that's not enough to make a case like far from enough yeah can I actually I want to see if I'm able we only have ten minutes left I kind of want to see if this is what if there's any evidence of that in the uh, in the paper itself, I kind of want to see. Uh, blah, blah 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 blah. Okay, do that. Close that. Pause. Close that. Where's the? Oh, here it is. Okay, open that up. Go to the paper. Can I search it? No, I sure can't. Sad. Oh wait, yeah, I can. Uh. With the last few minutes of this, I want to see what he's referring to. I want to know if we can find anything on it. Uh, because I'm curious. I want to know if we can find anything about this, like, mixed up with other animal stuff. If, if you have a That'll link... That'll be the last claim we'll debunk. Jackson, if you have a link, put it in the oh, Jamie, private Jamie chat put here. put it in the live chat. So well, that's... Jamie, you put it in the live chat. Yeah, I, I have that one. Okay. Um, let's see. The oh. uh, revised diagnosis of no, that wouldn't be it. Uh, this is broaden the basis, hold the ideological sequence. Um, that more and more discoveries are made become necessary to uh, come to the conclusion that 
genus Homo and not Nostralopithecine. Clearly distinct. Uh, for proof to recognize species of genus, you have to include include new material. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Genus, blah, 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 blah. Homo habilis. Um, yep, for handy. Yep, yep, yep. Um, if anyone can find um, it lists, it does list paratypes. Maybe he thinks of the type specimen description of paratypes. Uh, an adolescent represented by a nearly complete mandible with complete fully erupted lower dentition, a right maxillary fragment, including palate and all teeth. Premolars, molars, latter in the process of erupting, corresponding to parts of the parietal, temporosphenoid, da 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 da. Um, I'm trying to read as quickly as I can to get through this, and I am not seeing anything. I don't I don't know where he's referring to an unworn lower premolar. Uh, the uh, Nestle, are you seeing anything in here about it? No, I'm also I'm also trying to read it, but yeah, it's 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 way too much to read uh, everything in a few minutes. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything about different pieces of animal fragments or something like that. Yeah, I don't see anything here in the paper that says there are multiple different animal fragments in it together. So I think he's just making it up or misremembering possibly. Um, it does say that they found an adult and a juvenile of the same specimen. No, I saw that part. Yeah, I saw that, but like, that's not different animals. That's no, maybe, Maybe he meant different specimens together, but that would be a huge stretch from what he actually said. He he may have meant that, but he made it sound like it was a completely different animal. At least it, it he did to yeah. me, and he did to at least one person in chat. Yeah, the, the subsequent yeah association with the yeah I um. I think maybe he just meant specimens. He meant there were multiple specimens because I don't see anything here of I, I don't see anything here about there being mixed um, mixed specimen or mixed animal species together. So he's just pulling from somewhere and we don't really know where. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not okay. entirely sure, but didn't he say he got that from his book or from an interview? Or was he talking about something else when he said that? I, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I don't know. I missed it. Like, I, I think I remember him saying, like, oh, I talked to Tobias and he told me that it was... Uh... But, uh, he was like he was having many different fragments of animals or something. Like I maybe we can again. Can you repeat the last twenty seconds of this to yeah. make sure? Uh, I should be able to do that. Uh, let's see. Uh, we we may. Last 20 seconds, so that's... Yeah, I think, right I think so about I here. I also altered the other side. This is his published photograph of the right skull piece. Here okay. it is. You just don't really know what's going on. It looks a little funny. I don't really think, see a problem. But then when okay. you come over here and take the photograph, the color photograph that either I or I guess I took this photograph, and then flip this over, to look on the inside of the right skull piece, a straight line, a funny colored bone, and you could actually say these here are the same situation. 
And he, if you go then looking at the small print, he says that maybe more than one animal was used to put the type specimen together, which again, that is, that is a no, no, you cannot do it. A type specimen is a type specimen. You can't be interpreting it. Okay. So he that doesn't actually say that of anywhere. Four. So, well, so he, nowhere he's, he's in the mentioning article. a small, like he's mentioning a small print. Like what small print is he talking about? Yeah, because there's nothing in this article about the type specimen having multiple uh, individuals. No. Type the mandible. Okay, it, 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 like it, it does mention other hominids, like uh, other specimens, but they are not part of uh, HO7. Well, here it says type the mandible with dentition and the associated upper molar, parietals, and hand bones of a single juvenile individual. Yeah. Yeah. All do all do hominid seven O H seven. Yeah. Yeah, the, the oh, only sorry, thing like, 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 the only thing on, that I could Tom find is four nine nine says Werner hold on. Werner hold on, thinks on. part was added to the original, not that part was removed. He thinks his picture shows a now larger bone, not less bone, I'm pretty sure. Maybe. Anyway, I, I don't I don't know. What were you saying, Peter? No, the the only time when he talks about multiple specimen is just that they had one adult and one juvenile both of the same species at least that's what they thought at the time that they were both of the same species it says nowhere that right. the, the bones of these species were mixed or used to make up uh, uh that that bones from one of them so bones from the juvenile were used to make up the the skull of the adult or vice versa it says that nowhere and that's the only mention of two individuals that i could find yeah yeah i think you're right yeah that's all i could see too so uh, th there's just there's literally no evidence from the original paper that multiple individuals were used no. Or multiple like animal species. Sorry, there was there's no evidence that multiple yeah. animal species were used for this. There there's no evidence for it. It it's cat it's catalogs like the the OH seven refers to old old duvai hominid seven, which is, which is mentioned in this paper. Mm -hmm. it, it also it also mentions OH. 13 and oh six but these are different specimens they're not the same type basically right so maybe maybe that's maybe that's where he gets this idea from that there were multiple individuals well the, there yeah, is a it's, it's, it's too even he, he's too vague he's still too vague to be sure yeah. there there is a part where it says in preparing our, our diagnosis of homo habilis we have not overlooked the fact that there are are several other African and perhaps Asian fossil hominids whose status may now require a re-examination in the light of the new discoveries of the setting up of this new species. That's where they at least mention the species. There's Bananas. Absolutely yeah. bananas. Okay. All right. We can go back to the, uh, the three screens. <laughs> um, <clears throat> oh, I um I'm sorry. I I had to turn on the light first because remember last time oh, when I'm I was sorry, sitting yeah. in the dark, I I my my remote had to turn on the light oh, first. Um yeah, this is okay, so this is just truly baffling. Um again, he said he worked on this for 27 years. But he's like getting basic facts wrong about fossil hominins and fossil apes. Um, he's saying stuff that's just kind of insane. Like there are no like, oh, why is there a straight line? Uh, mm -hmm. Why is it different colors? Um, also him saying that uh, there were multiple species together uh, when that's not what the paper says. He's in the it's U.S. and he doesn't bad. believe in straight lines, so states must not exist, right? Because the, there are states that have this. I mean, 
specific borders, and then you have states that are completely straight. Hey, Peter, if if there are no states, there can be no states' rights. I rest my case. Mm -hmm. You can't have United States. Yeah. So, anyway. Alrighty. Well, we are at the two-hour mark, uh, so I think we're going to call it for tonight. So, um, thank you, Peter and Neslig, for being here, as always. I always appreciate having you guys on. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having us. And then oh, thank and you, everybody, in the live chat. And and for people who, who like me, are kind of masochistic when it comes to Young Earth creationists, um, while we were live... Hovind went live, and he's being interviewed about the uh, mm -hmm. debate that I mentioned earlier with Steven Anderson. So I'm going to check that out, oh, okay. because there, there will be whining, lots of it. <laughs> gotcha. All righty. Well, thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching, and we will see all of you next time. So see bye, you next everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.